Hello, everybody. Welcome to Movement Strategies to Engage Learning. I'm going to share my screen right here so that you can see. Um, okay. Um, if you want to add in the chat your response to what strategies do you use to get students up and out of their seats? That might be something good to think about as we're um, going through the this first couple of slides here. Um, but I'm excited to be with you today. My name is Sally Williams. I am the health and PE specialist um, here in the ISD department in Canyon School District. Um, so we're all about getting people up and, and getting our students up and moving. Um, let's just go ahead and get started here. Um, I hit record, so we are good. Our professional development norms are the same as always. Um, be committed, be responsible, be respectful, and be safe. Um, right now, we don't have any participants, so some of you may be joining from home. Um, so that's great. Um, mute your microphone if you do uh, come into the Zoom, and make sure you turn your camera on. I'd love to see your face. And if you have questions or comments, um, please feel free to type in the comment box in the chat. Or if you're watching this at a later time, um, feel free to give me, send me an email. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Um, we will be focusing today on student engagement and active learning, which is also in our um, MTSS framework. Our learning intentions and success criteria for today are, I am learning the value of meaningful movement activities in the classroom so that I can increase student engagement. Um, I will know I am successful when I can implement at least one of the following movement activities into my classroom within the next week of school. So that's our goal. Hopefully we'll give you a lot of um, good strategies that you can implement right away in your classroom. So we're gonna break this up into three uh, little groups here. Um, the types of movement strategies that we'll go over are, the first one is quick connections. These are things that you can do uh, to start the day off or after a break, um, the kids are coming in from recess or something like that after a, a natural break in the day. Um, this is for kindergarten through 12th grade. So this, this applies to every classroom. Um, so these are just this first category is just quick connections. The next one is learning with movement. And these are strategies that you can do within your lesson plans, within your already um, your already planned activities, just things to add to them to just increase some movement. And hopefully as you do that, increase engagement um, and make it a little more fun for students. Um, we'll also talk a little bit about kinesthetic learning that can also be implemented with what, what you're already doing today. Um, and then the third category is community building. So these are things that are like get to know you games and activities. And these are good things for like the end of the semester, or the first part of school. Um, or just if you need to take a break and um, before maybe you're doing a big project or something, you could um, do one of these things to, to introduce and, and help people get to know each other a little bit better before working together. Um, learning in groups and teams. So those are the three categories. And like I said before, I will provide lots of resources. Um, one, of the, one of the resources that I've used is Active Classrooms right here. They have a lot of um, good ideas as well. So you can check out their their website. Okay, to start off with, um, one of the fun things to do is to have a fun attention getter. Um, and so um, we are going to use this take off and touch down signal. See if my, uh, that's right, top gun. Um, so this is always a fun thing to do. You can use music that really adds to the fun and excitement of this as well. Um, anytime you add music, it's always helpful. We want to include as many of the senses, the five senses as we can. And so what you would do is you would say, okay, students, when I say take off, everybody's gonna take off and they're going to stand up and that's their signal take off. And you can, you might have to modify this if you have students in wheelchairs and things, I've had to do that before. Um, so you can modify and do take off. Um, and then touch down with hand signals as well.
Good. Hi, Monica. So it looks like we have someone joining us. Yay. It's so fun to have somebody in a PD when you're actually teaching and not for it to be just a recording. So <laughs> just for your benefit, I'm just going to go back one slide here. Oh, okay. Um, so that you can see maybe back. Um, these are the these are the three categories of movement strategies that that we'll talk about. So oh, okay. quick connections. These are things like just to like quick starters or like um, at the beginning of the day, the beginning of class, something like that. Learning with movement. These are things during your lesson. Okay. And we'll talk a little bit about kinesthetic learning, and then community building is like groups and and teams or get to know you kinds of games. Those okay. are kind of the three categories. So feel free to just chime in, ask questions um, as we go here. So my first okay. um, thing, this is just an attention getter. So before you start an activity, um, you could do like a takeoff and a touchdown. Um, so I could, I, I was playing my Top Gun song here. Um, you know, let's, let's take off and prepare our, our brains to learn. And so then we would have the students take off, they would stand up, and that's how they know that we're going to start. And you could use a cue, a music cue, or just, all right, we're going to take off. You could use a verbal cue, either one, um, however you want to do it. Okay, so the first activity, um, and you can modify this. So all of these slides you can copy and put your own, your own question in. I don't know, are you an elementary or secondary teacher? Secondary. What grade do you, what do you teach? So six, it would work. Okay, what what do you teach? Oh, I'm sorry, science. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. So you can make these all applicable to whatever you're doing. Uh -huh. But sometimes this is just a good get to know you. Which do you prefer? And then the, this, the students will either be doing the squat or the lunges, whichever they prefer. It's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> um, here's another one. Who would you hire to clean your house? <laughs> They could do the little dance um, in the in the class that I was in that they shared. I did not make these, by the way. I got these from another resource, um, but it was really fun to see everybody like doing the <laughs> different dances and stuff. We were all That's like hilarious. girls. Um, <laughs> I would rather spend my vacation time, you know, if you prefer the beach or the mountains, um, the Fortnite dab yep. is always yep. a popular thing for students. <laughs> Okay, and so then we would say touchdown, and that would be like, okay, that's our signal to return back to our seats. Um, so that's just like a, a starting kind of activity. Um, so now we're just going to talk a little bit about some of the science behind um, why we want students to be active, um, even though it seems like, duh, you know, we all kind of know that. But um, this is the research that that um, there's a couple of different research places that I'll I'll just go through really quick. Um, so classroom activity benefits students by improving their concentration. And so this is research from the CDC. Um, it also reduces disruptive behavior. So this is like, again, research that they found that that shows um, decreased fidgeting in the classroom and other disruptive behavior. Um, it improves their motivation and engagement in the learning process. I'm sure you can attest to that. Um, it helps to improve their academic performance. So higher grades and test scores, that's like lots of studies have shown that increasing their amount of daily physical activity is also just a benefit of moving in your classroom. And there's all sorts of activity, all sorts of things that are good for physical activity, all sorts of reasons why physical, physical activity is good. I'm a PE and health teacher, so I'm always trying yep. to tout the uh, physical activity side yep. of things. So phys we know that physical activity enhance enhances executive brain functions. Um, so this is John Radia. You, I don't know if you've heard of the book Spark, uh -uh. but um, he is the scientist um, okay. behind um, a lot of this stuff. And he has done like some 
he's a leader in the field of brain science. Oh, um, and he's done some really like this gets this book really gets into a lot of detail. Oh. Um, but, but he has um, just a lot of people use his science and resource uh, research um, for a lot of things, and so. Um, he gets he gets really into it in this book, but he he talks about how it increases norepinephrine, which increases the ability to focus and the capacity of the working memory, which makes sense with the CDC studies. Yeah. Um, so that correlates. We can that's like we can see how that would work. You know why that why that study shows that um, mm -hmm. increased circulation, our brain gets more blood flow and oxygen, um, releases serotonin, which increases memory and attention, releases dopamine, supports working memory, increases glucose, which gives improved mood, attention, cognitive, and behavioral flexibility, not to mention all of the good mental aspects of all of these things. Um, I love this quote. He says, I call exercise miracle grow for the brain. So a lot of times we think about exercise, and, and I know that we're not talking necessarily about exercise. We're just talking about movement in the classroom. Yeah. Um, but moving a lot will help, you yes. know, students to get in that habit. And um, a lot of times we think about exercises like for the physical benefits it gives us. We don't always think about it, exercising our brain and yeah. what it does to to help our brain function better. And hmm. so that's that's what this book is all about, and that's what his science is. Exercise keeps brain cells healthy in a way that playing chess or other highly cognitive activities do not. So um, he would probably argue to do both of those things, play chess <laughs> and stand up or sit down. Um, so another um, another bit of research is from, this is FIT with a PH, FIT America. Okay. Um, they show in their research that kids do 20% better in class with um, yep. one hour of physical activity a day. They miss an average of five less school days per year, which I know attendance is a big thing for us right now. Um, and they have 40% less disciplinary co complaints. So wow. I think all teachers would love that right now. So yep. <laughs> just another reason why it's important to um, move. This is research from active classrooms. Um, and they have a lot of really good resources too on their website. I think it's like you can Google active classrooms and there's, okay. there's a lot of really good resources there as well. Um, but they talk about motivated uh, and engaged learners are ones that are moving, um, improve student behavior, strengthen classroom cohesion, reduces stress and anxiety for students and the teacher. So that's <laughs> pretty cool too. Um, and I know that when I've done this in my classroom before, I taught health and I taught PE. So I was in the classroom um, and I was in the gym. Um, but when I got my students up and moving, I, I really, I felt better too. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's not yeah. like, you know, yes. there are days where you have to mm -hmm. lecture a lot and there's lots of things, but there's all kinds of things that you can do. Um, and then improve student and teacher concentration and academic performance. Yeah. Um, so here's another, just, this is a graphic from the CDC, from active people, um, and talks just about like the immediate and long-term benefits. Oh. And so some things to maybe just think about in the back of your brain is mm -hmm. how could active classroom strategies help student engagement in a post-COVID classroom? So I actually was a teacher during COVID and I remember coming back after COVID and it was like, we lost all of those protocols, like, like, handing papers, getting up and putting yes. the paper in the basket. It's like all of a sudden we were sitting so much more, yep. right? And so um, some of those protocols kind of went away. And, and so thinking about, oh, okay, how can I bring those back? And also how can I include more? Um, what is something, and, and then maybe thinking about what are things that you're already doing? You may not even realize that like even getting up to put your paper in the basket is uh -huh. actually a good thing. I, sometimes I'd be like, oh, here, I can put that in the basket for you. And then I'm like, oh no, that's probably not the best thing to do. Let them have the, um, yeah. I was in a crowded classroom. So it was a little yes. bit harder for kids to get up and out of their seats, but yes. um, you know, maybe we're not doing them a favor by, by grabbing yeah. their paper for them. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what is something that you have learned about the value of active engagement in the classroom? Is there something that like stuck out to you? Definitely when you like reducing that structure and letting them move around 
and um, it, it reduces that stress all of a sudden. It's you don't feel like you're trying to control something anymore. Now you feel like you're guiding them on kind of a journey. And they, for me, sixth graders, they need to be out of their seat. To me, they oh, yeah. they need many recesses. They don't have them. They need that opportunity to get up and move around. And the the reduction of the fidgeting is so important. Um, and they're kids. They want to get up and move around. And I want to encourage that. And like you said, with a, a tight classroom, it's harder. It's, right. it's, it's challenging and it's really important to do. Um, so you have to kind of be really structured about how you're going to go about engaging in the opportunities, but it's totally doable. You just yeah. have to plan for it. And I think it's very important that we do that. I agree with you. Yeah. Well, thanks for, thanks for sharing. And I, I agree with you, like sixth graders, they just, that's such a hard adjustment for, um, yes, you know, not having recess yes. and, and to sitting and sitting all yeah. the time. <laughs> yeah. And they yeah. just need to move. They do. They sure. need. So this is a, this is another activity, um, that is called win and ask. And so what you would do is you would have, um, you would have a student rock, paper, scissors. We can rock, paper, scissors, you know, one, two, three, go. Do you want to rock, paper, scissors with me? And then we'll, we'll just model this. Okay. Ready? Rock, paper, scissors, go. Whoops. I missed the go part. <laughs> okay. Let's try it one more time. Rock, paper, scissors, go. Okay. So, so say paper covers rock. So if I win, I won with paper. I would okay. ask you, what is something you are already doing in your classroom that is active? Okay. Um, in my classroom, the uh, we do a lot of labs. So they get up and they move around oh. the room. Um, we have some uh, days where we do demonstrations where they get up and move around. Um, they have to get up and get their own supplies like you were talking. Instead of uh -huh. like, taking it to them, they have to get up and do it. Um, That's so great smaller things like like that and then sometimes like yesterday one of my classes was falling asleep so I made them stand up and jump around so oh that's great yeah <laughs> um and so so this is just another thing that you can do with them and the key here is win and ask so the winner like whatever they whatever they win with if they win with rock then they would ask this question okay. and, and like I said you can copy this slide and just uh -huh. change just change the questions here yeah so that's, that's uh, a good one. Um, so like you talked about um, learning with movement, this is kind of our next little category of how to incorporate these within a lesson. Those are things that are like maybe just a little starter kind of a thing. Um, so these ones are things that, that are, that you can modify your actual lesson to include movement. Um, so they may be instructional strategies that incorporate movement into the learning activity, using movement as a quick formative assessment. You can, like you said, you could have everybody stand up if you think this is true or false. And I'll show you a couple of other things. Um, and then review and reinforce learning with movement. Um, this is, they say that there should be 10 minutes of instruction um, and two minutes of processing. So for every 10 minutes of instruction, there should be a pause and a two minute of like processing time. Yeah. I don't know if that changes. You would think that that would change like developmentally. Yes. Um, but I remember learning about this um, in one of the conferences I was at and they were talking about college students actually, which I thought was so interesting that even like college students, adult students, still needed that like 10 minutes of instruction to two minutes of process. So something to kind of think about. Um, so as you're incorporating movement within yeah. your already planned lessons, some of the things to consider are alternative seating. And I'm sure you've heard of these things before, like here's some wobble chairs, um, having different kinds of chairs like this, there's bean bags, there's, and these can also be like positive uh, rewards for people to use. 
um, standing desks. Mm -hmm. I know that not all of these are like really cost effective and our budgets are really tight. So I totally get that. Um, these I thought were really cool. Like, can you imagine if kids had could like sit and pedal as yeah. they were writing? And some of the teachers, I know that like elementary school teachers use a lot of these, like mainly like I've seen like the yeah. wobble seats or I've seen them put like a, a balancer thing on their yeah. chair. Um, or even like the bands, they tie the yes. the um the bands to the the legs of their chair. Yeah. Um, and things like that. Um, so there's some ways to do it. And I know that some teachers have said it's like so obnoxious at first. And then it's like, it takes a little while and everybody starts to just get used to it, including the teacher. But it would be hard for me too to have kids like wobbling around. I haven't done a lot of this type of stuff. So it, you know, you'd have to kind of play around with it to see where you're taller. I, I have in my I don't know my students it was sixth grade but they just couldn't handle the wobble chairs they would like literally fall out of them all the time mm -hmm. um, kind of turned into a thing yeah we, bean bags were good though we had bean bags so oh that's, that's cool good choice yeah <laughs> and it's and it, even though even though they're like sitting it's a different it still is different muscles and yeah. it might be that might be a reward thing too so yeah, yeah. um another idea is to like think about as many yep. senses as you can. And I'm, I'm sure that a lot of, you know, that might go without saying, yep. um, also ha hand signals yep. and sounds. And we'll yep. talk a little bit more about the kinesthetic stuff. Um, but they, I remember, um, a couple of the different classes I've been to, they say, just give it, give it some time, yeah. you know, like maybe your wobble chairs, you realize, okay, those aren't going to work. That's just, <laughs> you know, but like even just incorporating, um, yep some of the activities yep. and things that it just takes like trial and error and maybe just getting used to it and having your kids get used to it because yep. it is going to be different at first. And it might be, you know, like in a, it, it, there might, there might be a lot of interruptions at first, but once they get used to it, then it might be more of like an, a protocol. Okay. Um, oops, I went the wrong way. Okay. So this is another, this or that, um, again, if you have a crowded classroom, you would find a space to do this in. Um, so here's my takeoff signal. We don't have to do this, but this is just, and I realize there's a misspelled word there. Bob traveled to the lake because he loves to swim. Is this a fact or an opinion? So again, you can modify this to be whatever you want. And you can even change those to be the answers to be whatever you want. Um, these are just gifts that you can find. Um, and you, I'll show you how to find like exercise gifts and things too. So this is another example of a math problem. Um, this is one for science. So you could hold up an item, you know, is this, yep. is this pen going to float? Um, yes or no. And then they could do the, the correct uh -huh. dance. Um, and this is like a really good, like just a, a, a formative assessment to, yeah. to, to see where kids are at. Um, another I ate or ate pizza. <laughs> this one is a, uh, a health one, which refusal strategy would you utilize? And it doesn't necessarily have to be a right or a wrong answer either. Uh -huh. So, but these are just some good slides that you can go through and, and modify to fit your own curriculum. Mm -hmm. And then it's always good to like, if you're doing a lot of these, um, you know, to end with one that is like a more calming yeah. one to kind mm -hmm. of get them settled down before they, before you end the activity. Um, and so this is, this is also an activity. Um, even though I'm asking a question here, how could you incorporate this or that into your classroom? What you would do in this rally, this is called rally Robin. Um, and you, you know, you don't have to use the cheesy graphic here, but um, what would you do to integrate it in your classroom? The person that is sharing um, would be talking and the listener would be doing the activity. Oh. So it helps with those listening skills, particularly for younger grades. Well, any grade actually, yeah. but some of those kids that really do have a hard time listening, if they have an activity to do, um, even if it's like rolling their arms while yeah. they're listening, it's going to really help them to listen. So the, the sharer answers and the listener does the activity. 
That's cool. And then they can switch. And then when, when um, they're done sharing, the other person can share and the other person does the activity. So that's, that's another, that's another uh -huh. way to do that. This is just a slide I put in here that has a whole bunch of resources that have those activity gifts. Okay. Um, and they, they're just, they're all different kinds. There's like a library of things here. So I just included that. And I'm the, the people that I got this from um, said we were fine to share it. So oh, it's, cool. it's okay to share. Um, and then this is um, an example. So Marsha Tate, this was a, another conference that I went to. She, she actually, you would be interested in this because she's a science, uh, her background is in science. She's She's written a lot of books on just kinesthetic learning and ways to in different ways to engage the brain. And so this is like her 20 different instructional strategies that she talks about, about different ways to, to um, engage the brain in learning. And so I'm sure you can think of like a song that you learned or maybe that you teach your classes about a learning strategy. And I remember like the helping verbs. That's what comes to mind when I was in elementary school, am, is, are, was, were, be, being, been, shall, should, can, could, may, might, must, or like the 50 states song or whatever, you know, those kinds of things. That's a, that's a really good example of, of music to, to help remember things. Or um, when I was in college, we used all of those mnemonic device uh, things. We had like, I remember doing Poseidon's trident, the, like the first letter of all of those is like all of the the nerve plexus all the different nerves that are in your arm <laughs> and so um anyway there's more simplified ways of doing it but these are just oops, these are just things to think about okay. um i'm going the wrong way um different ways to just that you probably i mean a lot of teachers already do these things but if you just need like a quick checklist for me it was like oh this is something just a quick checklist to go through and think about what could i add this 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 lesson seems to be really boring or students yeah. seem to be really bored what i'm just going to look at this list of things what could i add to this to make it uh -huh. um, more engaging this is also um her blog that okay. she has some resources on and these are her, the couple of books, oh, Okay, just if you're interested, I'm just trying to give you tons of examples and things, resources um, that I you like this. could use. Um, and then I don't know if you've ever used dice. You probably, I was going to say you might have with doing labs or whatever, Yeah, um, but dice are always a really good way um, to use, just add another form of interaction in a game like kind of thing. And so um, this is an example to use just to get kids moving. Um, this is one that they can use in an English class. What is the story about? So they would roll the dice and maybe do this in a group or they would do it by themselves or however you want to structure it. Um, this is a worksheet that you can fill in. So oops, now I'm going to go out of my, um, but you can print this off and fill it in. I think actually Mm -hmm. uh, you can put it into the PDF uh -huh. and, um, and type on it, I believe. So Neat. anyway, um, so that's another, these are also like really good get to know you things. So like when I did this, when I presented this at our DTL summit, we had everybody come in and the, we had, they were sitting at round tables and so, and we had like the big, I have my big dice here. Um, oh, I don't have, but you know, the, the big foam dice. Yeah. Um, we had, we had them throw a, 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 you know, those are always fun to throw, but <laughs> keep them on the table and they would, they would roll the dice and whatever, whatever uh, number they rolled, everybody would answer that question. Oh, okay. The table. Yeah. So it's just another way to, to yeah. incorporate something different. Um, and you can have them stand up and do that too. Um, even standing up around their desks, you know, just gets them moving different um, muscles and things. I know that we're almost out of time. So hopefully you've learned the value and meaning of movement activities in the classroom. And you have something that you can implement within the next week of school. Um, this last, these last two slides, this is how to search for gifts. Yeah. 
Um, so, and I didn't know this before, but you can go to this images uh -huh. when you go to Google, like I know you have, pro most people know how to do that. And then if you go over here to tools, cool. you can go to creative common licenses. Oh, okay. Those things are, those are like shareable. Those are okay to use on slides and whatever. Okay. Um, and then you would just cite the source uh -huh. uh, so that you're being yeah. aware of copyright. Um, so that's how to do to do that. And then um, I've also listed all of the different oh. resources on one page of this slide deck. Awesome. And I think they'll put the slide deck on the bite size PD. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Do you have any other questions? I don't. I really like the, um, the short ways to show engagement because part of my IPOP was to make sure that I was doing wait I took a note um oh yeah um so that they can provide the students are providing me feedback through their engagement and uh -huh. so rolling the dice is a good one for that um when and ask is good um this yeah. and that so those are really fun ways to just do those quick snappy um feedback yeah. exercises yeah so, and the fist of five thing is a you know okay like, like one, you understand like five, yeah. I can, I can teach it to someone else. Yeah. You know? So um, that's awesome. Those are good things that I can implement right away. Cool. Well, I'm so, I'm so happy that you came and happy that that's going to help you. If you have any further questions, don't hesitate to reach out my. Okay. Um, well, I'm, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. This was really helpful. Yeah. Great. I'm so glad. Have awesome. a wonderful afternoon. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.